Boys. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, my friend comedian, Granison Crawford. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, dude. How are you? I'm living my life. You? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. What you What you drinking there? What kind of coffee beverage uh, you got? I'm drinking a little white mocha, five pumps. What's a good? White Almond mocha? Milk. With five pump, wait, five pumps of what? Of white mocha. Apparently, you can just put that in a liquid. Oh, I didn't know that that was a, a thing you could do. Yeah. I always assumed... That mocha was from like they use like real deal. Only only at local spots, which is way cooler. I just gotcha. was on my way here. You use Starbucks, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They're just gonna put flavoring in it. You know, I, I've always wanted to do the thing at Starbucks where you go and you get a beverage that is like a seasonal beverage, but they definitely still have the flavor for. It. Yeah, like peppermint mocha is my fucking jam. Yeah, I'll drink that all day if I'm going to Starbucks. Oh yeah, but I feel like it would be taboo to order it now. Yeah. It's summertime. It's August. Yeah, people would be like, easy, peppermint. Listen, peppermint's good any time of year. I'm with right? it. I chew gum that's peppermint flavored. You're, you're Why should I be allowed to drink coffee that's peppermint flavored? Exactly. Um, okay, let's – let's enough, enough coffee talk. Let's talk about this movie <laughs> that you've come in and chosen to hate. Uh, and not chosen so much as it sounds like it really called to you and, sp- and spoke Ooh. to you on a deep level. Yep. That is Darren Aronofsky's Mother. Mother. Oh, that shit is whack. What you uh, what what you got against the move against this movie? Uh, I thought it was just real pretentious. Um, it was hit you over the head, but at the same time, trying to seem like it was real, like metaphorical and whatever. It was just it was lame, man. Um, and it was boring. So it it's like one of those things where you're like, all right, cool, I get it. It's artsy. You want to be intellectual and things like that. But like, come on, man. What what am I watching? This I, I was there for too long. I can't get it back. I was with my roommates, and they were like, I didn't think it was that bad. And I was like, well, that's good. Uh, you don't live my life. It's the worst. You uh, you saw this in theaters? No. I saw oh, this in okay. my house. It invaded my own space, and that's what I was really mad about. And you just chose to sit there and take it. And, I mean, we it was roommate movie day, I guess. I mean, we just we got high, so we watched it. Um, and uh, And, man, not fun. Not fun for me. It's really – okay. So for those of you who have not seen Mother uh, – 2017 American psychological horror film written and directed by Darren Aronofsky starring Jennifer Lawrence, Javier Bardem, Ed Harris, Michelle Pfeiffer. Plot follows a young woman whose seemingly tranquil life with her husband at their country home is disrupted by the arrival of a mysterious couple. Uh, This movie was far and away one of the most divisive movies that I've ever heard of in in a long time. Like the critical reaction and the public reaction was so... Disparate, and there was such, there were so many opinions going around about this movie when it came out. I remember vividly, like people really, really hated this movie or really, really loved this movie. It doesn't yeah. really seem like there's any any middle ground. Okay, and that's kind of it. It it feels weird because I didn't see this movie in theaters either. I literally just watched it this morning before yeah before I came into the court. I'm you. so sorry. It's okay because you know what? I kind of liked it. What? And I, I didn't. I went into it with as little expectation as I could. I knew the plot because yeah. at this point, like, I don't really, I don't really care about spoilers for movies so much. I, I looked, I, and I find that it actually helps me enjoy movies more if oh, I, gotcha. if I can read up, especially a movie that's been out for some time. If I can read up on a plot of a movie beforehand, yeah, and kind of know what I'm getting into a little bit, yep. it doesn't. It, it it makes it just easier for me to sit there and be like, okay, yeah. So these these calls are being made, right? Yeah. You know that, like, as soon as as soon as she gets pregnant, I'm like, oh, okay, we're getting into baby killing territory here. Yeah, I know 100%. that that's coming around the corner. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't jar me as much when it ha- like when it happened because that's a big big plot point in this movie. Yeah, is that there's a baby that gets murdered by an a, not an angry mob like sort of a worshiping yeah, mob. Yeah, yeah, very a Jesus baby. And then and then gets eaten to death naturally, or eaten after it's dead. I don't know. Flesh of the Christ. Or Flesh something. of the Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's. It's one of those things that, like, I can definitely see why people would have freaked out at that, not knowing that that was what was coming. Yeah. 
Especially it, if you're at that party. Yeah. Oh, like my it, God. Like if you didn't know that was coming and you were at that party just for like free booze or something. See, that's a th- I don't think that the people who were at that party in the movie – we're expecting anything less than, yeah, we're going to get to eat the baby of the guy who we all love and adore. You know what? You don't just show up. It's not like they stumbled across it. So I imagine they did have that in mind. They no. Were like, Eventually, we'll get to, after a crazy montage, it's baby eating time. And this movie is basically all crazy montage. Yeah. The thing, uh, here's what here's what I'll say about this movie. And just sort of like a baseline, so we can we can have our we can have our little banter and arguing as we go along. Here. Sure. I think that this movie is. I don't think it's a bad movie, and I don't I don't know if it's a good movie. Mm. But I will say that I I didn't dislike it. But I will I do think that it's far from Aronofsky's best movie. Yeah. And there's definitely, and reading up on it, especially today, there's a lot of problems with the way that this film was marketed. Mm. And that, I think, set the movie up to do a lot worse than it, than it could have done, potentially. Yeah. Because what Darren Aronofsky did with, with this movie is make a studio get behind him making an overt art movie. Yeah. Like, this is on the level of Stanley Kubrick pulling off a studio getting behind making 2001 a space odyssey yes yes because that, that there's a lot of there's i'm not there's not really parallels mm-hmm. other than the fact that they're both totally bonkers movies that mm-hmm. have a lot of things that you can't that that it doesn't make sense for why a, a studio that's trying to make normal movies would allow these things to a happen studio trying to make money yeah uh, there's no there's no reason that this movie is going to make money for it's your studio. It's not going to kill. It's no not one, going to. No. You, They're not going to make three of these. No. Absolutely <laughs> not. And they, you could tell that they were trying to use the star power of Jennifer Lawrence to get people into the theater. You know, she's featured so prominently, not just in the story, but also in all of the marketing materials. You know, yeah. most of the posters for the movie are either her face super close up or like her body uh, uh, super close up as well. Yeah, and they all feature her so heavily because they're like, we gotta get, we love people love Jennifer Lawrence. Let's they get her love in there. Her and her boring acting, but um, but yeah. yeah, she's uh, she's such a non factor in this movie as far yeah. as like, because she's basically being being played off as sort of a blank slate who you don't. It's not that you're not supposed to care about her, but it's that every other character in the movie so actively does not care about her. Oh, yeah. She is she is the second fiddle to everything in the world. It's very jarring. Yeah. As far as, like, the, the, the choice to, to make that happen. Yeah. So, okay. So walk me through, as you're watching this movie, because it's a very, like I said, it's a very overt art movie. Sure. It doesn't really let you in on what's going on. Until really like the very like the very end of the first act or the first half of the movie, yeah, and then you can be like, oh, this is an uh, this is allegorical, this is metaphorical, yeah, yeah, and that becomes so much more obvious then. But before then, what was it like watching it? Because you're you know you're high with your roommates, you're at home, you don't really know what's yeah. going on, yeah. Um, and I had I had only seen a couple previews for it and forgotten them. I remember it seeming like it was supposed to be some sort of um suspense film and that was one of the reasons i wasn't really into it just because I, I don't care to like jump scares don't really scare me that much and then when they do i'm like why'd i do this you know um but uh for, so when it started i was I, i'm always open to movies when they first start um i think that's yeah. most people and um and so i'm watching this and and jennifer lawrence is there and i'm kind of figuring out what's going on and everything's just a little weird mm-hmm. you know everything's just kind of a little bit off especially when that first guy comes and yeah and he invites him over and i was like oh cool this is a movie about like him gay cheating with uh, on his wife you know yeah. what i mean like because they were just like he was like sleep over and then they had the the all night drinking and he like opens the door to the or she opens the door to the bathroom and he's like naked throwing up and her husband's like it's okay let, let him have his it's privacy. okay get out of here like he got was, too much jizz in his stomach he got honey. too much it um, you know i'm packing um it's been years with us uh that was also weird too because like yeah there was just it was so disconnected um from like anything that resembled empathy which it plenty of art is mm-hmm. um but like he was distant to her, they were off. Like it, it just seemed unhappy. And so when, when I was watching it, I was like, "Oh man, this is like there's I'm not rooting on anybody in this movie." Mm-hmm. And um, 
And so then as it goes on and then more people come and it gets kind of crazy, um, I, I actually became more curious. I was just like, oh, this is nuts. What, when is the, you know, the, um, when is it going to drop? Like, when is the big thing, you know, an alien in the grass? I don't know. You right. know, um, shout out to signs anyway. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I just, and then by the time, um, the, the major mob with the soldiers and all that stuff happened. Yeah. Um, I was like, this movie's dumb. Um, but, uh, Okay. You know, like I was like, all right, well, at least it got to the point of whatever was going, like where something kind of happened because for so long, nothing happened, nothing, nothing, uh, overtly, like everything was kind of subliminal and, and under the radar with it. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. So what, the way I look at it is there's a lot of stuff in this movie. That's very, at very, at first it's, it plays itself like a very small family drama Mm -hmm. where you're still not fully in it because, and I think this is a deliberate choice on Darren Aronofsky's part as a director and writer yeah. for the movie, is that your pl- is is the perspective is so close on Jennifer Lawrence mm-hmm. that you that she's the audience surrogate for the whole movie, right? For to some degree, and she's paying attention and she's watching everything go on, yeah. And she's not really an she's not really an active participant because they're choosing to not make her an active participant. Yeah. Like the closest she ever gets to really being actively involved in the movie is in the stuff with her and Michelle Pfeiffer after the she makes the lemonade. Yeah. And she's and like Michelle Pfeiffer me. was incredible. She was great. And, yeah. and her I honestly I do think that the acting by pretty much everybody in the movie everybody did a pretty good job. You know, I liked everybody but Jennifer Lawrence, but I also am tired of Jennifer Lawrence. Oh yeah, you're not yeah. you're not really so much. Of Jennifer I, like Lawrence. I met her, she's great, she's yeah. a good human. Um, but yeah, I, it's just bland most of the time. To where, me. Did, uh, where when did Jennifer Lawrence fall off for you acting wise? Uh, all of the uh, most uh, after one of the um, To Kill a Mockingbird. What is it called? The Hunger Games. Oh, Hunger Games. the most popular thing <laughs> for her. To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, to Kill a, To Kill a Bird. Jay. Uh, whatever. Uh. Um, yeah. The after like after that first one, I was just, I, all, everything I saw her and I just kept seeing like Cadness, and I was just like, this is boring. Like See, she just doesn't have a lot of depth. To I me. never watched Hunger Games. Yeah. I actually, I actually enjoyed watching her in Mother a lot more than I did watching her in Silver Linings Playbook. I didn't mind her in that. She had more personality. That's yeah, because she actually does have a personality has a, in that movie. Yeah, ridiculous personality. And she's not just a blank slate. No. But she's making more I think as far as like having to play more of a of a range of things mm-hmm. because of all of the stuff that is that's being demanded of her in Mother compared to what's being demanded of her in stuff like Winter's Bone or yeah. or um the movie that I literally just said, Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, yeah. Uh sure. And there's a lot more that it's a lot more taxing of a role. Is emotionally like mm. Silver Linings Playbook. You can see where she got the Oscar for that. But Mother, it sh- it's it's pretty shocking that she didn't at least get a nomination for this. In she should have definitely she should have gotten a nomination. Yeah, but everybody was so against this movie on that level. They're like, "There's no way, <laughs> Darren Aronofsky you fucked up bad, man. You messed up, man. We were supposed to make billions off this." What do you think of Aronofsky as a filmmaker in general? Do you like his work? I think he's great. I'm um I'm a really bad consumer. Uh, yeah. so for me, like most of my life, you know, I do, I do stand up comedy with you and, um, most of my life I didn't ever watch comedy. Uh, and I never knew when I was, when I grew up in Oakland, I thought that films were all like all films were made in a big warehouse somewhere. And it was like a film factory. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, that's what LA is. It's a film factory. Cool. Um, I didn't know how it worked or pay attention to directors or any of that stuff. When the credits rolled, I just assumed that was when I was supposed to like check out mentally. And so, uh. So even even being in L.A. and acting like I don't if you were to say like, oh. Aaron, you know what what name all his films, I'd be like, ah, oh, don't recall right now. Um, but if you if I saw them or you mentioned them, I'd be like, oh, right. that's an Aaron film. Yeah. Like nice. for, for me, we got Aaron. Aaron Darren Aronofsky is my favorite stuff is like the wrestler is my favorite movie. <laughs> Aaron. Is. Aaron, Aaron Daronofsky. Aaron you guys are you guys are on a sort of like first half of last name basis. Yeah, that's how you. Course. That's how we're far cl- you we're, and we're medium close. Man, people don't call the, everybody calls him Darren. I call him Aaron. I call him Aaron. Yo, drop the D, son. We got it. Um, yeah, I love the wrestler. I love Black Swan. Didn't Requiem for a Dream, great movie. But you, it's again, I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Episode that you can't watch. It's a movie that you can't watch more than once. Really, it's yeah. so jarring and draining. And Mother kind of feels like that, sort of in the in the same vein as mm-hmm. like a movie 
that is really, really, it's a, it's a movie that I, and on one level is like, I don't feel like I want to watch it again because it's sure. got, cause it just is, it's a very, it's a very aggressive movie and yeah. it really swings for the fences. Yeah. But there's another part of me that's like, I kind of want to go back and watch it and see what I missed because I know there's a lot of stuff that's very, is, uh, is, is come out in the explanation of the movie and in interviews. Yeah. There's a lot of allegorical stuff and there's a lot of metaphorical stuff that Absolutely. is deliberately in the movie that I'm sure I probably missed yeah. on the first go around. You know, and that's the thing that a lot of people I don't think liked about the movie based on what I've what I've seen. Like, again, it's not really laid out. Darren yeah. Aronofsky's not holding your hand as a director or mm-hmm. a writer. Mm-hmm. You're just kind of expected to kind of figure it out as you're going along. Yeah. Did you uh, immediately like catch on to what we were, he was doing, like as far as like talking about like biblical stuff and mm-hmm. religion? Yeah. Um, I I didn't immediately catch on, but like at by the end of it, I was like. Oh, okay. I get what's going on. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, that even when she would say it, like, you're just, uh, you don't love me. You, you love that. I love you type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, Oh God, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, cause he's, that's basically what God's all about. He's like, yo, love it. I mean, in our interpretations, I assume. Right. Um, I have never talked to him. I'll let me you either. Know. I I'll really... let you know. I'll come back for that episode. Yeah. Well, I've talked to him, but he's never answered me back. He's no, never, no, no, never I've... sent a pager. I know. Code. Now, th- one, th- four, three. This would be honestly. What if this would be a great crossover if we had the Bruce Almighty version of God played by Jim Carrey? Yeah. Instead of Javier Bardem. Oh my God. That would be a very. I would love to see that version of this movie. Well, it depends. Are we talking young Jim Carrey or old Jim Carrey? Because Jim, Car- old Jim Carrey would be dark. Oh, old Jim Carrey. That's the thing. He would have to be like aged up because yeah. Bruce Almighty came out in what, like the mid two thousands? Yeah, way sooner. And that's the th- like if if we're if we're going with the idea that Jim Carrey is still God, mm-hmm. then it makes sense for him to be aged up a little Heck bit. Yeah, he can be weird. He can he can do that thing. <laughs> he can be weird. He can be <laughs> understatement. Uh, so okay, so the biblical stuff, you know, and this is the thing they do, uh, after the fact. Aronofsky basically had to go out and say. Yeah, this is a biblical allegory <laughs> that Javier Bardem is God. Uh, the Ed Harris, Michelle Pfeiffer characters are Adam and Eve. You got Cain and Abel coming in. Yeah. And then she's Mother Earth. Yep, she's Mother Earth. And then she gives birth to Jesus. And then the second half becomes New Testament, Book of Revelations, happens by the very end. And then everything is reborn after the fire. You know what's ridiculous? I just now got hit with the revelation of the whole writing thing. Mm-hmm. Like the reason God hasn't put out more stuff is because he's had writer's block. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't think of any new ideas. And then all of a sudden he was like, oh, I can just, I can, I can fuck. Ah, oh, thank God. Because he's had writer's block and erectile dysfunction. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. God, like, the god of, of Christianity is not like the gods of other religions. Mm-hmm. Like, remember how in Greek mythology and Roman mythology, those gods were fucking. They fucked all night. They fucked all night. They went down to earth. They fucked all these women. Yeah. And then they built, and then they had, like, demigods coming out. The Christian god is not doing that. Mm-mm, Christian no. god is kind of a prude. He's also by himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's probably up there. I mean, look at creation. Just him jerking off, essentially. Just him jerking off all He's day. He's like, well, what can I come up with? Nah. Oh, yeah. okay. It's a, it's a dude. Yep. And oh. on the seventh day, he rested. Too yep. much jacking. Yep. Too much jerking. He, had to, he got some Gatorade. He got <laughs> he some to, protein he bars. He got some electrolytes. He pulled it back into his system. <laughs> But yeah, and there's a lot of stuff like, oh, actually, you know what? This is this is something that just occurred to me. Like, very obvious biblical thing. When uh, when Ed Harris is puking in the toilet, mm-hmm. there's a section missing from where uh, there's a there's a wound in his side where his rib would have been taken out. Oh yeah, that's like okay, Duh, Adam Absolutely. and Eve. Adam and Eve. I, of course. Wow. And uh, anyway, okay. So the other thing that this movie kind of gets at and uh, it's real it's real obvious the biblical stuff is it's much more obvious rather mm-hmm. than the other side of the metaphor which is the relationship between like art and the people who make art mm-hmm. and the people who consume art yes um because that stuff is all a lot more i don't i don't it's it's harder to pin down exactly what darren aronofsky thinks 
about that relationship in this movie. Yeah. Because there's one level where it seems like he thinks that the people who uh who there's a relate there's obviously like a relationship between the people who who make art and the people who are like the muse in the way that Jennifer Lawrence is. Yeah. That can be unhealthy but also can create really good work. Yeah. And you know, that's the stuff that is finally, oh, I finally created something. Oh, everybody wants to see this thing. Yeah. But then the next step of that is either people are going to love what you do and be like big fans, and then they're going to eat your baby in front of you, and you're going to be so sad by what you created. Yeah. Which is really fucking bleak. Yeah. A hundred percent. That doesn't feel like, the, to me, the right way to interpret how art could be it's a very it's a very negative yeah sort of like goth emo you kid felt world that, view. Though. you felt that like w- the more popular became uh, his his words and his art became the more fanatic the people that uh consumed it became mm-hmm. and and by its own nature then the very thing that is supposed to be like the sacred thing like art mm-hmm. um becomes tainted in all of this in all of everyone else's reason for it existing right yeah you know, it, it's almost kind of like uh, how there's just different passages and stuff in the Bible from people who weren't even Jesus or God. Right. Or just like, yo, this is what I thought about what he said. Yeah. And then people are like, yeah, the, you know. The Bible's just a bunch of books. It's a bunch of books. It's a bunch of books written by different people who all came, who, who got compiled together yeah, they by a, who the fuck knows. They had a BFF and – they liked him, and he said cool stuff that they liked. So it's nepotism, man. Done. It's nepotism at its earliest stage. It's like the guy who's like the head of the studio, pulling in his kid and being like, "Guess what? You're going to be the assistant to somebody now. Guess what? Your book's getting in the Bible now, kid. Done. You got one line in. Perfect. You you get a paragraph. Oh, you like you like psalms? How about how about you get a psalm? You want to do a psalm? <laughs> that would be ridiculous. But this, yeah, it's such a. It's such a weird way to approach art, and I, I get it on one level, mm-hmm. but I don't. Well, is it not true? I mean, it's, I think it's, I think it's true to some degree, but I don't know how entirely true it is. And maybe that's because I haven't achieved the level of fame that, say, like an Aronofsky or Jennifer from Lawrence has. Because even you say for it, like Jay Light, you're already there, man. Man, if if I was that level, my podcast numbers would be way higher than they true. Are right true, now. you probably would have been like i need a, a bigger profile on this one probably <laughs> hey look i still like i still got you got you got a movie that i want to talk about there it is and that's important done you know so i mean okay so if it, it's so like the thing that i really did like about this movie uh is that it does it, it is so crazy yeah and it does swing for the fences in such a such a hard way mm-hmm. let me ask you this why was it that when all of the when the crazy montage starts happening and the soldiers start coming in and the house is torn apart and destroyed. goes to shit and totally destroyed and it feels and it becomes a completely different movie? Mm-hmm. Why was that the part that made you think this movie was bad? Why was it the part that made you that made you feel turned off from the movie? I um. I, I couldn't even explain it. I I just was like I, I I was already kind of bored of the movie, and then when this stuff happened, that kind of changed the whole dynamic of it. Mm-hmm. I felt like um, it it's kind of like when in like a in a TV show or something like that, when there's a time jump and you don't get recently. Uh, Barry did this. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert: Barry there uh, jumps in time. I won't yes. tell anything else. It's okay. It and, does, it, and, yeah, it and I go up. the fuck, dude. And it feels like it just – it feels like it cheats the story. Like I don't get to see the actual process of it. It just goes straight to chaos. Almost, It almost felt like it was like to get to where his point versus like letting the story play out. I mean I don't know how much more I could have watched of like right. invasive people. But I think that the movie – I think that this movie kind of needed to have that weird jump though. Sure. You know? Because other – because you're right. It, there's there, – the story of the movie is not played out in the little moments. This is not a movie that is like a small scale. Did you see Eighth Grade? I haven't yet. So I hear it's dope though. So Eighth Grade's a really good movie. And we talked. I talked about that a couple weeks ago. Shout out to Bo Burnham. Listen to that episode. It's very good. Bo Burnham is great, and Elsie Fisher's great. But that's a movie that takes place over the course of 
a very distinct few days and it all is very small and mm-hmm. the drama is it's realistic and this movie does not have the same kind of story and the way it's told yeah because it can't be told in those moments this movie is all about like big bombastic shit going on and yeah and you know, from the very beginning, it's like, oh, we're going in a burned out house. And then all of a sudden it's completely refreshed and anew. And there's a lot of fighting and you don't know what's going on. And and then there's and then there's angry mobs coming in and there's people and there's this, this people are sitting on a sink and people are calling Jennifer Lawrence a cunt over and over and over again. What are you doing in my house? Yeah. And there's and you don't know what's happening. Yeah. But it makes it, it's I think that that adds to the level of like disorientation and craziness in this movie that yeah. that makes it work. Yeah. For me, at least. Yeah. Um, but I can see why it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. I mean, like, I, and, and I can't even say it's a it's a bad, like, in, in our discussion and kind of like, you know, better hashing it out. I can't even say now that it's a bad movie, but it's just not one I enjoyed. That's I just, totally. Well, you know what I mean? Totally valid. Like, I, was like, eh. I mean, you did say right at the top, you said uh, you thought it was it was pretentious, which yeah. it absolutely is. Yeah. It 100 percent is. Yeah. It's very pretentious. <laughs> Do so, you are you not a person who uh who who likes watching pretentious movies? No, not at all. Okay. Mm-mm. What is the what's your what's your flavor? What do you like to watch? Um, you know, honestly, I like I like simple stories. Um, do you know uh what was um it wasn't Boyhood. It was uh Steve Carell and this kid. Uh man, I oh, uh, Summer The Way Way Back? The Way Way Back. Okay, I haven't seen that. I really like that movie. That's the one with yeah, Steve Carell's like the douchey stepdad. Yeah, and there's a water park, and yeah, and and not, I mean, not a lot happened. Like, I don't necessarily need as a writer. I typically tend to lean towards like event based storytelling, um, but like um, as as an observer, like I liked that. Like, not much was going on except that mm-hmm. he was just trying to find his way, and the water park was kind of his gateway into that. And so I, I like stories that I get to like grow with the character and get to understand them. Gotcha. Yeah. If you were the one who was making Mother, like if you got chosen to remake this movie, what Oof. would you do to change it to make it to your liking? Mm. How would I have done it? I'd do, I'd do it a uh, lot of big scores, a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I'd break it into three parts, you know, just to milk that money. Um, and... I, uh, mother with just different mother, levels of exclamation points. Mother, yeah, yeah. There'd be different mother, dimensions. Mother, mother, mother. That's how. Yeah, that's how yeah. it all layers. It out. wouldn't even be numerically different. It would just be bigger font. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazier scribble. By the by, the third movie, you can't read that it says mother. You just have to assume the last one would just be mother bigger. Um, yeah. So um, uh, honestly, I mean, I I like sci-fi. I would probably incorporate a it would probably be a c it would be like a like a dark cw show that's what i would change it to and it would and and, so, and, and all of the things involved <laughs> would it end up being and i know i said pretentious and then i see cw but um that's that that's what i mean the cw is the total opposite of pretension so it makes it's totally cool yeah you're just <laughs> You basically want to make like Riverdale, but the Bible. But the Bible, yeah, because then you get to see it. You get to have characters that were like, uh, you know, freaking demons or whatever. But um, yeah, I would because then you get to see them kind of grow and see what happens. Granted, Mother Earth, how are you going to make her grow? But um, I don't know. I mean, I'll perfect. watch. I would watch that show as long as we still get to see Kristen Wiig executing motherfuckers and shooting them in the head. A hundred percent. Because that definitely as soon as that happened, I was like, all right. Yeah, I am so because I was so into that. Yeah, I was so into a lot of this movie, and then there were other parts where I was just like, "Okay, I see what you're going for." Yeah, it's a good, it's a good try. I was actually nervous, I, and I don't have kids. Um, I'm not looking for kids right now, but uh, I guess that'd be weird. Um, but I was nervous for the baby the whole time. All those explosions were happening. <laughs> you should have been nervous I, I for the like, baby. Oh. No, get out of there. Stop fighting. And so, I, like, there was part of me that was, like, genuinely, like, man, I hope this baby doesn't blow up. I was worried about the baby blowing up. When the baby got eaten, I was just like, well, that makes sense. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? That says a lot about Darren Aronofsky. They, he directed the movie in a way that you were like, 
Okay, yeah, I'm glad that baby got eaten instead of getting blown up in an explosion. <laughs> Jay Light definitely <laughs> sorry, was relieved, aware it was going to happen. That the baby yeah, got I was eaten. like, ah, oh, tension relieved. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I will say, I do want more movies where the baby gets killed and eaten and it, it is done in a tasteful way. Because this is probably the most tasteful it could have been done. Probably, yeah. You know, we're not talking like, when I heard that that happened, I was expecting, like, the baby to get, like, like literally brutally murdered at the hands of this crowd. Yeah. Right? Like the, cause Which you they see pretty the, much did. Yeah, it kind, but it kind of did, but active, but, like... It seems almost like an accident yeah. in the movie, the way it plays out. Because, oh, yeah. Because it's, it's like the baby's crowd surfing and it's and it peeing and it's crying. And then all of a sudden, it's you know, the head's not supported, so the neck snaps. You guys can't see it, but Jay is waving his hands um, to symbolize baby crowd surfing. Look, I put my hands in the air like I just don't care about this baby because it got uh, killed and eaten yeah, at the hands that of crowd. Yeah, that baby crowd. gone. Um, and, then, and then you just see like, a, you know, a, a pile of baby. A pile yeah. of baby entrails, you baby know, baby pop. baby charcuterie. Oh, what? And that's the thing. It's like I expected them to literally be like, t- like mur- like we're gonna Ripping actively it, rip it apart. And I was like, yeah. I don't. And I heard about. it. I was like, I don't know if I want to see that. Mm-mm. And this was like, oh god, okay, cool. Yeah, I skipped he that. Did, like Mufasa's he, death. He did it right. We're good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it says a lot about him if he can be said to have done a baby murder, right? Mm. You know. Yeah, and I am still, you know, I still like, still like Ms. Director. I am intrigued to see what he comes up with next. I don't know. I hear he's doing the second Venom. Oh, really? No, I'm just kidding. But Man, that would be insane. I actually do remember a time when they were talking about having him direct some superhero movie. Let me see if I can pull it up on his Wikipedia page. I wish he would do Lobo. What's Lobo? Lobo is like an intergalactic bounty hunter from DC. Oh, okay. Um, he's kind of a motor mouth, but he's more like a Wolverine. He was basically like DC's counterpart to Wolverine, just on a DC scale. I ah, mean, uh, yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah, 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 he's pretty cool. He's a badass. Did he ever do any kind of stuff? He did he's, Black Swan. Oh, he was attached to the Wolverine. He was supposed to make that. Oh, really? And then that got uh, given away to uh, Gavin Hood, I believe. Yeah, I think he would have been insane on the Wolverine. It would have been crazy on the Wolverine. Because he would have made that right after Black Swan. Yeah. It's Black Swan is a, is a banana. I love Black Swan so I much. I haven't seen it. Oh, you got to watch that. I'm so bad. I would definitely, if you if you are interested in what he does as a director, but mm. you haven't seen Black Swan, you got to see Black Swan. Okay. That's one of the, that's an, that's an all-time great movie. I'm with it. Um, I heard it was good. And uh, yeah, I, I, I am glad that you came in and made me watch this movie. Me too. I am. It's a. It's a. Re- I can see why it is as divisive as it is. Would you say uh, top ten controversial opinion films? Like maybe I could see. You know, because there's a lot of other movies that get really like. I would definitely say top ten of the 2010s of this decade. There it is. Yeah. Maybe of the maybe in the new millennium, but I don't know about top ten all time. Because there's so many other there are other movies that literally got like protested and shut down. Yeah, I think that's a bigger did, reaction. Did that, did this, yeah, this movie didn't have that happen to it, but it was like it got such a weird reaction because it's a movie that makes very little sense unless you're willing to pay attention to all of the clues that are dropped. Very true. So yeah, and even after that, you, it takes a podcast for you to remember them. Exactly. So uh, I hope that retroactively. If you listen to this podcast thoroughly and took notes and yep. then watch the movie again and you're like, oh, I see what happened there. Oh, uh, the rib thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Granson, thanks for coming in today, man. Jay, thanks for having me. Where can the listeners find your work? Uh, you guys can find me all over the gram. That's Instagram for people who don't know. Um, at Instagranison. That's Insta, G-R-A-N-I-S-O-N. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Granivision. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, that's mostly where you can find me. I also have a YouTube channel. It's a uh, granite vision. Um, so that's, uh, if you just go on YouTube, put it in the space bar, G R A N I space vision, then, uh, you can find me and I have my diaries of a door guy, which is a series about my time as a bouncer. Um, and kids play the patrons. So cool. Have fun. Sounds like fun. You can find me on the internet at diet J on Twitter and Instagram, J for show dates. And uh, that, yeah, that's about it. Go leave a review on iTunes. Leave a rating. It helps me uh, beat out the numerous Bachelor and Bachelorette recap podcasts and uh, all the other nonsense that beats me in the TV and film charts every week. Ridiculous. Hope, hope Jay win. 
Help me, help me, help me win at podcasting. <laughs> help me get to the top of the podcast mountain. Top of the podcast pile. Uh, you have been listening to Blockbusting. <laughs> that's not how the intro. That's not how the outro is supposed to go. What did I just do? <laughs> Guys, this has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Nailed it. <laughs>